Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and welcome to today's reading. So I feel like after some of the notes that I've been getting, I've gotten these incredible notes from you basically saying, no, this person has not come to their senses or they're still working through their pieces, but the progress from you has been... Um, has been very uplifting. Um, let's take a look into things for today and just kind of see where the story takes us, like the way that we have been doing. So it will be a general reading for this collective. So uh, it won't resonate with everyone, but if it resonates with you, you may wish to uh, check out some of the other videos since they are also very much connected. Um, you may also wish to hit subscribe because, uh, again, they're very much connected. So if this is your story, uh, you probably want to you probably want to check it out a little bit more deeply. So we'll get in um, to to start. We're going to look at what is happening in kind of the energy. It's the energetic backdrop, but we're going to mix into it the energy that's flowing between the two of you, and just kind of see what today looks like. I remember yesterday was kind of, uh, had a lot of intensity to it, but not necessarily, um, not necessarily like, it wasn't necessarily fast moving a lot of things. It's not go day. Like we had that reading a few days ago where things were go, there was something that was a go day or something like that. Five of staffs is about struggle. We've been seeing that come up a lot. That is, um, so that's the fire energy and it's that energy of struggle. And sometimes like yesterday, I think it was in the extended, it came up feeling like um, that you could, you could, it was a struggle, but it was worth it. And you could really get some good value out of going through that struggle. This doesn't feel as much like that. It feels more like just a regular kind of struggle energy. And then here we have the six of staffs in the reverse, which also feels like struggle energy. So the reason I say that is because that six of staffs in the upright um, feels it's it's a victory after a long battle. Um, but here in the reverse, it's just that the battle rages on, you know, and so that's why it still has that kind of struggle feel to it. Definitely a lot of um, challenge, struggle, oop, I just dropped some cards, sort of energy in this. Okay, um, we also have the world though. So this is energy that's flowing between you. And what I feel like this is more of a, something that's affecting you than anything else. Um, so this world card is their world card. Remember that we saw... Um, in their situation, they had something that was coming together, like it's something that is finishing. It was actually the world card that came out. This is the Dunia card, the Dunia card, and I think it is very, um, it has a similar sort of illustration to the traditional world card, exact same feel. So something is finishing up, but it is unsatisfying, and yet... It moves you or it moves them towards something that is uh, happiness. So, um, you know, I use the example and I think I used this example in the extended. So I used it the second time we talked about it, but it was the time that I got a promotion, but it didn't have a raise at attached to it. So the promotion still set me up for something better because it enabled me to go for bigger jobs, but the there was no raise. So it was a little bit of an unsatisfying result um, and yet a positive one it just wasn't immediate and I knew that but didn't really know everything there was to know about it and I feel like that is similar with what your person has so they were if we recall they were working with um, some missing information as they were wrapping up this cycle and they are also some information that is available to them but they're not necessarily using or they're not usually or they're not actually making use of um, so there's a lot of, it's a struggle energy. It's a very in the thick of it energy. It's a very, something has wrapped up, but it doesn't feel like it really made things much better kind of energy. Um, that's what I feel like is it's kind of in the thick of it sort of day. It's a day in the life, but not, um, not the easiest of the days in the life. So then coming in here to get a little bit of clarity on that so we see the chariot I saw the chariot wanting to come out earlier and it, and it didn't come out um but there is this sense of not necessarily go day but it's like one of the go days like they're all go day this is really 
<laughs> that's what this card honestly wants to say every day is go day it's just it kind of feels like um in some ways it makes them feel a little beat down um but i feel like it's also got a sense of energy that drives them forward with the eight of feathers what's really great about this maybe this is the best aspect of the energy that i'm feeling here is this sense of not overthinking things and remember this is the energy between the two of you this is like a confidence um in this that you don't have to overthink it and i'm not saying you won't still surface overthink it anyway but there's something really deeply in there that no matter how bad it gets um you're gonna you're not gonna be overthinking that part you've gotten in on the ground floor um we see that one come out every once in a while so we also have um the seven of feathers so feathers um, we have the eight of feathers there seven of feathers here Feathers are air energy. Crystals are earth energy. So we have the three of crystals and then the seven of feathers. And it's the seven of feathers in the reverse. This is one of the things that I really like to see because I saw the three of crystals before I saw the seven of feathers. And the seven of feathers is the sort of thing that makes you feel better about the three of crystals because the three of crystals is a day that doesn't exactly go well. Um, in the upright, this card says along the bottom exactly what it feels like the opposite of here in the reverse. Um, and that is collaboration and product productivity. In the reverse here, it feels exactly like a day that is, or an energy of not being particularly collaborative or productive, especially not productive. And I don't always read reversals as the opposite of the upright, but that's what it feels like in this instance. And then I look down to see what it said. Um, they just matched really well. So when you have a day like this, it can be kind of a drag. It can be a no fun sort of situation. However, if you are um, the sort of person who has done a lot of work to get to a place where you trust yourself a little more, um, then you may sail through a day like that and honestly just have the perspective to do just fine. And I think that's something that we all shoot for. Oops, I want that. We all shoot for it, but we don't necessarily get it. Um, and this nine of feathers is an example of what it feels like not to get that that experience. So like I say, we all shoot for um, wanting to feel okay even when things don't go well, but we don't always get it. So here's the person who doesn't get it. And we've got it um, in this energy. You have basically you get to use what you've earned or what you've built so far. So if you are a person who um, is fairly and I feel like there's you and then there's your person and I feel like that's the direction that it goes it's possible it could be the other direction or there could be aspects that bleed into one another but basically what it feels like is um the seven of feathers is that you've done a lot of internal work okay you've done a lot of internal work it makes a tough day a little bit easier to manage um, than it would have been had you not done the internal work. You've also got an air of anxiety about this day, which I think is going to hit your person kind of hard because I don't know that they've done the internal work that makes a day like that, an unproductive energy day like that, not it makes it better. So all those cards turned over and we want exactly one of them. Um, that is That is frequently the case. If I get a couple of them turned over, you know, I might want both. Or just, you never know. I never know until I feel it. Um, but when I see a whole chunk of them turn over, oftentimes it is just the top one. So here we go with the Six of Feathers. Six of Feathers is, um, it's the energy of things calming down, but it's the energy of saying, oh, I'm going to ensure that things calm down a little bit today. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to close the door. Um, you know, when I'm in my office uh, during the day, at, at lunch, I like to close my door for a few minutes. My door is almost always open so people can come talk to me. But I like to um, close it for a few minutes in the afternoon and just sit down and meditate. And that's the energy of this. This is recognition of that as being the right thing to do and then benefiting from it, doing it and benefiting from it. So that is a, this is a good energy today. It's like, hey, there's a ton of struggle. It's not a super easy day, but I'm not sure that is slowing you down. I think it may be kind of frustrating for your person, though. There is a self-destructive element here. Um, so this is the Ace of Acorns, which feels a little bit like the Three of Crystals in the reverse. Both of them are in the reverse. Um, with the Three of Crystals, it's things not necessarily working out. They're not. It's not productive and collaborative. Here with the Ace of Acorns, that is definitely the case, but in some case, for some of you, there is, um, and I think it's more for some of your 
divine masculines, there's an element of um, this piece of, I, I can't, I, I got to be a little bit self-destructive about it. So there's something that doesn't move forward, but it, it doesn't move forward with flair. Um, strong desire not to make a mistake. With the six of shells here, it's about not making a mistake or not wanting to make a mistake, but it's also about um, not wanting to, we've seen it come out this way before where it feels like they don't want to repeat the errors of the past. And that is an admirable place to be. But sometimes you have to look a little bit more deeply into it and factor in something that makes things a lot more complex. But it's it's who were you at that time versus who are you now? Because when you have the you never have exactly the same set of circumstances, but when you have something kind of similar befall you, um, you may not respond the same way because you may not be the same person. And so I feel like there's a little bit of a hiccup here. So your person may feel inclined to um run away from something, not necessarily you, um, but they may feel a little bit inclined to run away from something and recognize that they're not that person anymore. And I feel like that is maybe a way bigger step forward than it feels like it is, but I'm, I'm just putting it out there because that's really, um, kind of the feeling of this, of this, I don't want to say just this day because we know they can bleed into the days on either side, but just of this energy that you're in today. This is what's peaking and wants to be talked about today. Um, so let's look into messages that need to come out for you. Messages that need to come out for you today. Because remember, your person was getting to the end of something that was finishing up but not fulfilling them. Something that was still unsatisfying. Um, they're in overload with the sense of awareness that the reason they're able to manage that they'll let the, okay, so they're in overload and they have some awareness of what's going on within themselves. They also have some awareness that the reason that they're able to manage it at this level is because of whatever has happened over the last couple of weeks with the energy with you, even if you haven't talked. So your person has turned a corner and this is part of why I think we see constantly that they're a different person every time you talk to them. So they're starting to get a better feel for your place and all of this. Nice. Um, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they want to come closer. It has the effect of scaring them away in a lot of cases. Um, but it's, there's still, there's some information that they have to kind of work through, process through on a personal level, I guess. With the two of staffs, it's about needing to um, make a, a trip, but it's an emotional distance, an emotional journey. They are in this energy in the process of doing that. They're in the process of doing it, but it is a very personal journey, very internal journey. And we see that reinforced here with the Mershita card. Um, that's the equivalent of the high priestess in the traditional tarot. And there is a very personal, it says secrets here, but it's, it's really, it's secret until you get to a place where you're prepared to share. And that's just not where, um, I think it's them. But it could also be you. I feel like you're you're doing some things too where you may be working through some things where you may be willing to share and be vulnerable because you don't have that issue. Um, but there may be increased unwillingness to be vulnerable at this time. I see that with the Ace of Cups. So we saw that kind of in the month of March that there would be a lot of emotion that wanted to come to the fore but also a tendency to kind of keep it at bay. The Queen of Cups was, re was kind of... Um, the representation of the energy that was bubbling to the surface the and that's very emotional energy that's bubbling to the surface and the eight of cups was eight of cups here in the reverse was like a deflection of that and a very intentional deflection of that it reminds me of like uh, the energy of a young teenage boy sort of very able to de deflect emotion in some cases sometimes they're full of it but in other cases they're inclined to um to to hold it at bay and they're very good at it um better than their their female counterparts in some cases because of the way that they are um you know it's society it's nature and nurture there's a lot going on there but 
Um, not stuff I'm necessarily going to get into, but it reminds me, it just, what I'm feeling is young teenage boy level deflection of emotion happening here with the Ace of Cups. But not like, it's not completely like that because that would be a young person who's undergoing puberty at the same time. This change is not puberty. Um, this is maybe like a puberty of the soul, I guess. Um, boy, I, I hope that one doesn't stick. Um, <laughs> It's, but it's like they're they're kind of with the high priestess um it's that sense of secrecy but really it's more than anything it's that feeling of doing something as an individual in a bond situation so the bond with you does not become less um but with the two of staffs like this is a it's like a, a difficult journey this journey that they have to take it's an emotional distance that they have to travel it's values changing and they are disinclined to be particularly forthcoming from an emotional standpoint let's see here what else wants to come out with that they're like i i really get that teenage boy sort of level of deflection like i was saying that feeling of it's almost impenetrable like they they can turn it off oh this is avoiding that um needing to go into that thinking cave so we saw for the month of march there was going to be a need to go into the thinking cave and that this was going to happen um it looks like for them it's not happening just yet we have the page of acorns here in the reverse this is um like almost a chemically depressed sort of feeling, but I'm not saying that it is a chemical depression. It just almost has that sort of uh, chemical depression. Is a, it's got a weirdly unavoidable sort of sense to it. And I don't have it, but I've been close enough to it to see uh, someone who suffers from it, you know, in uh, both a chemical sense and also a habitual sense. So I, I get habitually depressed where I just tend to do things that I do when I'm depressed. And then I have uh, times when I just can't control it and might otherwise behave differently. Um, this is like the chemically one. They don't, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of control over it. It's hard to say. Um, it, there might be hormones involved in this. I, I mean, it doesn't necessarily say that's going to be the case for everybody, but it is pretty intense in that sort of way. Um, well, there will be hormones involved, but I mean, I don't know that we're talking about like those shifts, um, somebody could be pregnant though. Um, I doubt anyone's going through puberty could definitely be going through menopause or as my husband puts it, manopause. Um, but the shifting that occurs, you know, hormonally, but somebody, this is, this has that element. I said 11 year old boy, but sometimes I think being pregnant feels like being an 11 year old boy. Anyway, um, the two of feathers, there's a, there's a decision that's particularly difficult to make. And in this environment of, um, this is a lot of consternation and a lot of energy that's not really being, it, there's a reason this isn't productive energy from this standpoint. It's going in a lot of directions. It's a lot of struggle in a lot of different directions and not a lot of um, useful information coming out the other side until you take a step back and look at the big picture and realize, um, again, the same thing we were just seeing here that it's not the same person going through this so that like you you're not the same person that you were two months ago they, not at all like they are not the same person that they were two months ago oh and and these things are just continuing to grow and change and so when you get presented with a situation where you've seen something very similar um your response to it in the future may be a little bit different so we have the five of swords here and with the five of, five of feathers, it's the same energy as the five of swords. It's it's air energy, and in the reverse here, it's about not subscribing to the con the consternation. We've had a lot of consternation feeling, um, and this is a, and this is a ton of it up here. And this is about saying, okay, I see all of that, um, but I'm going to take a different path. Maybe I feel as emotional as an 11 year old boy, and I've got this level of. Um, emotional deflection going on but I'm not I'm I'm a 30 year old pregnant woman I'm just making it up but I'm just saying you know that's a very different perspective where you choose to say all right I'm gonna handle this differently 
you know. Um, and that's what comes in with this five of feathers. So I do see some growth here, even though you got a tough day. I see some growth. I see some potential to handle that in this seven of feathers here in the reverse, which is to say some of that inner child work has been done. Some of that self-trust has been built. And that just makes this whole thing a different kind of experience. It also talks about, so the shadow, um, it, that's like the devil energy. It's it's the side that talks about what um, what you need to work to bring into yourself. And it goes right alongside with, and these are some serious buzzwords, and I get that. But the, the inner child work, so hint, hint, if you want to go do the research on Google and you're kind of like, well, I'm new to this, I don't know where to start. Inner child work is going to be really important. So is shadow work. They move hand in hand and they basically are all about you. Um, and so it's a matter of figuring out what it is that you need to work through. Because this card says at the bottom, ambition and self-empowerment. And you can see how ambition could be challenging and uh, useful. You can also see how self-empowerment could be the result of working through those things. And so this is almost, it's its almost devoid of the uh, devil energy that it talks about here. But it is a matter of um, a need to move toward greater self-empowerment because some of this ambition is becoming more like control. Um, so again, we see the concept of the missed opportunity though. We see a missed opportunity and then here with the Knight of Crystals, a sense of doesn't matter. This Two of Feathers is also a feeling of kind of a crossroads. And so the cool thing about this crossroads is that this particular one, if you decide to make a different, if you go in a different direction, you still ultimately get to the same place. So you're moving toward a lesson. You're still getting to learn the lesson that still has uh, the opportunity to happen. However, um, some one of the roads or some of the roads, it's not always just going to be a couple, but they they're not all the same. Um, they get you there in different ways. Um, okay, so we have the ten of crystals. The knight of crystals is you're going to get there some way, not necessarily the same way that you expect or the same way that other people make it. Um, ten of crystals talks about. Um, like your your daily lives, okay? You're considering your daily lives right now and part of the impact, like the lessons that you two are teaching each other, whether you're in communication or not, because a lot of this is was set into motion the moment that you had your soul recognition. And now we see, okay, um, it's time for you to start thinking about your daily life and how happy you are with it. So this 10 of crystals reminds me a little bit of whether or not the nine of cups is in the upright. Um, is this something that makes you happy? Are there adjustments that need to be made? And, you know, it's not the simple, is your person here or did they come back? Or, you know, it's not just that. It's also the rest of your self-actualization. And we see that, you know, here in the self-empowerment, in the ambition, in that card, it's a matter of figuring out where where are you, not, not not what are your weak spots, but where are the next places that you need to focus, which of course we're going to look at when we get over here. But this is the energy that kind of puts you into that place. But here's the thing. This is also your person. So I get that there's a lot of um, deflection of emotion going on, but there's also a lot happening beneath the surface. I'm curious to understand what is happening beneath the surface. So yesterday we were looking at the changes that were happening with your person and some of the things that were going to cause them. They were already starting to embrace some of the changes we saw that were going to happen across the month of March. This seems pretty significant. Um, you know, so we looked into in the extended, um, we looked into well, they, they got across this bridge. What does the beginning of that bridge look like? And so they're in the thick of it. So when we see this over here, this is in no way surprising. It's practically an extended to yesterday's extended. But when we go into today's extended, what I think we probably want to look at is what is happening beneath the surface? Because we see that deflection. It's solid. They're good at this. But what is happening beneath the surface? Because um, it's it's not super clear, but it is super empowering and important. And I that I can't stress it enough. I feel like they have retracted. There's a sense of that happening. Less communication, more 
consideration, but not necessarily immediately. So that's supposed to happen during the month of March. But with the Hermit here in the reverse, it looks like it's not happening yet. Um, we got the Emperor in the upright. So there is this tendency to move towards stability, okay? And that's that for this. There's a tendency to move towards stability. So I feel like that is a really positive thing, but something that has not necessarily... Um, it has not materialized success for them just yet. I will say that. So yeah, when we get into the extended, we'll look at the change that's happening and just be aware that, um, yeah, that it's happening beneath the surface. Like we saw, you may not be able to see much evidence of it. Um, link will be down below if you want to check that out. I think that'll be interesting. Meanwhile, let's look into you and where your focus needs to be. And what did I drop? Yes, new perspectives coming, but not here yet. Okay, so with the with the this is this is essentially the hanged man, but it's the universe having put you in a position to learn something. So that you you were being directed by the universe earlier this year, gently kind of held in position until you were learning something, and this is kind of like that. But you've got a whole new perspective on life that's coming, and I think that's where things get a little bit more interesting. So you're being dropped into this new perspective kind of gradually. With the Son of Cups here, you might not feel super inclined to talk about it. And that's okay because it is very personal and something that is kind of um, not, not necessarily something that you want everyone's opinion on until you've had a chance to try some of these concepts on yourself. I get that sense and I feel like it's the right thing to do um, it goes right alongside with that Hermit card that we were seeing before. Here we go, right as I'm saying it. That Hermit card that we were seeing before that kind of um, was allowing you to take some time out, do some thinking, um, get to a better place before you really start hollering it from the rooftops or from, you know, I mean, this is, so this is the Dervish card. It's the equivalent of the Hermit card. We see here number nine, the Hermit card in the reverse and your person kind of resisting the urge to go in and intentionally locate this wisdom, but we see it happening in the background. Um, with the Dervish card, we see you actively doing that. And again, you're, you may be a little bit quiet and into yourself um, but it's not a bad thing. This isn't from any sort of depression. And in fact, right as I'm saying that, Knight of Acorns comes out and says you're actually feeling pretty good about things. So there's an energy of you actually feeling pretty good about things coming out um, of this. But it's interesting because it doesn't happen immediately. It's something where you realize even without this new perspective, you're okay. So this is the goal, guys. This is This is being able to release attachment. So you're not sitting here waiting for this person to come back. You leave the door open, but you don't wait for this person to walk through it. You, I mean, they're, they're able to walk through it, but you have a person that's still trying to learn how to walk through a door and commit. And so this is, your time cannot be spent focused on that. Although for sure the opportunity is there. Um, and that's where I feel you just moving closer to it with the 10 of shells more and more. This is you realizing it's not an inevitable question of what are you going to do when something that you are um, blown away by runs across you. It's what have you done and how are you growing from it? So this is very real and present and current and tells you that there may be, instead of looking for certain solutions, recognize that you already have some of those um, there may be a need to kind of look more from within or look more within, spend more of that time. And you guys keep getting this, um, spend your time in meditation and prayer. Don't forget to do that. There's a lot for you there that is, um, that is ready to show itself. That's what I get with this. And this is the high priestess, um, Queen of Feathers has to do with not making any sudden moves, but I feel like it's more like the realization of that. Like you're already getting that you're not going to make any sudden moves. You figured that piece out. Um, but this is a matter of kind of owning it and being able to say it out loud. Leaving unfinished business, just like with this un uh, unfinished, undeveloped perspective, um, you leaving unfinished business is something that you're capable of now. Um, but also because you're capable of finding your own closure with it. 
finding it on your own terms and not needing to rush it. A lot of not needing to rush here. With the three of feathers, this is you're moving to a new level with this. This is um, having the lessons that have come from this specific situation. You are having these lessons and you're able to actually get to a place where you're maybe able to use them a little bit, you know. Um, having the lessons is one thing, but being able to incorporate it into your life is a whole different thing. With the Queen of Shells, this um, this is what I... Okay, when the Queen of Feathers came out, I thought this thing about the Queen of Shells too. And I just... I didn't say it because it wasn't the number one thing that came out. But it was like... I, it was in there. And the main, the main thing that comes out here with the Queen of Shells is understanding why you're doing what you're doing. And doing things for what you consider to be the right reasons. So... Um, I'm going to stop here. We're going to go to the extended and we're going to look into what is happening under the surface with your person. But check out what is happening under the surface with you. So remember, these things have to come together in order to unite. OK, you have to be doing your work on your side while they do theirs. And so let's take a look at what they're doing when we get into the extended. Link is down below in the description. I'll either see you there or I will see you in the extended. Or I'm sorry, <laughs> I'll either see you in the extended or I'll see you in tomorrow's reading.